Uh, but now we live in very different times. This is the uh, meaning of a number of hadith which are there as a mercy for us. For Tuba lil Ghuraba, blessed uh, the strangers, those who come and haven't seen, haven't had the blessed blessing of seeing even the Sahaba and hearing their stories, but come so many generations, so many eons later on. And a sound hadith says, Innakum fi zamanin man taraka minkum ashrama umira bihi halak. You are living in a time, he says, when whoever abandons a tenth of what he's been commanded to do will be destroyed. But there shall come upon people a time when somebody who does a tenth of what he's been commanded to do will be saved. Now that doesn't mean that we can just sit back and say, well, we can be lazy. Because, I mean, how many of us can say that we're doing a tenth of what the Sahaba were doing? It's probably not even a hundredth. It's not an, opportunity, not an excuse to be lazy. But it is a prophetic indication, if the hadith has any purpose at all, that we need to be merciful with people in this time. And that when people are hesitant and stumbling, um, in most cases that's not their fault. It's the fault of the world, it's the fault of their upbringing, it's the fault of us very often for not being a good example, for being beautiful and being attractive. And we need to be endlessly forgiving of those people. When we see somebody at the Eid prayer who's we can conjecture, uncharitably, probably not been there since the previous aid prayer. We mustn't rush up to him and say, brother, your trousers are too long, or brother, your wife is wearing lipstick or something like that, because the chances are if we do that, he won't come next to aid prayer. We need to make his acquaintance, make him feel welcome, very gently, as it were, take his hand and reassure him that everything's all right and that the mosque is his place as much as it is anybody else's, and befriend him and show that we can't pass judgment when it's not to our credit that we're Muslims, because Allah yahdi man yasha. Faith is a gift. He gives the gift to whoever he wills. We can't say that we're better than others because um, we've achieved it. We don't achieve faith. We don't achieve anything. Hmm? Everything we have is, is Allah's grace, and he can snatch it from us at any moment. I think we need to be aware that outside the mosques and outside the circle of our Islamic societies, there is a huge shadowy area of people who often very strongly identify themselves with Islam, but we don't see them very much. And sometimes we don't see them at all. Uh, you could call them, as it were, the, the B team. Now, they're still Muslims, they'll stick up for Muslim causes if they're pressed, they're on the right side of the Palestinian-Israeli dispute, they sympathize with the Muslims in Bosnia. Maybe sometimes they'll come to aid prayer. Most of the time they'll try and avoid pork and alcohol and so forth, but they don't come to the mosques. And I would say that most of the mosques have done a very poor job of opening their doors to those people. That, like all human beings, those people feel a need for dhikr, for ibadah, for having moments of quiet in their lives. But somehow the Muslim community is presently structured, doesn't have uh, a lobby or a hospitable area in which they can come and not feel under pressure, not feel judged, not be made to feel inferior, that if they're not doing everything perfectly, the moment they step in the mosque, then we get come up to them angrily and, and shout so that we never see them again. Um, and I hope that that, that, will, that will improve because those people represent a clear majority of the communities, not just in the West, but also in the Muslim world, uh, increasingly. People who identify themselves culturally, politically with, with Islam, but can't quite find a habitable space within it for them to be religiously. Now, 